Good morning. Welcome home to Mailer's Landing. I'm Sue and we are here in growing zone 6B in New England and I have a pocket full of goat grain. You singing me a song? You singing me a song pipes? No, not yet. Okay. They're still a little shy. They're new here. This is what, day four? Um, but Piper, the blue-eyed goat here in front, she's actually let me give her scritchies a couple of times. And Drummer's a little more shy. So we're gonna cozy up to her. My goal is to spend a lot of time with them over the next few days and see if we can't sweeten them up a little bit. And now that I've left their enclosure, Piper's come to see me. Hello. No. Here's my girls. We just walked out of the gate and now they're like, hey, come back. We'll probably hear them crying out a little bit too. I know I've been putting it off, I've been putting it off, I've been putting it off, but let's go see the garden. There's so much going on here, I don't even know where to start, y'all. So let's start here with the garlic. I pulled one up experimentally and it looks pretty good. Um, so I think this weekend we're gonna pull garlic. Here, come look. Okay, so this is soft neck on the right. And you can see that it's, this one, this one was flopped over to the ground. And it looks like we've got a whole bunch that are just starting to flop. So those should be ready this weekend. And the hard neck, I'm looking at the bottoms. I may dig one up just to check in on it, but you can see here the bottom leaves are dying off. Um, I think I'm supposed to wait for two to three of them to die off. So I may wait an extra week on the hard neck, but honestly, I'm probably going to get in there this weekend. I want to show you something really cool on the garlic. Hang on a sec. Okay, so this is super neat. It looks like a tiny head of garlic is forming there. And that's exactly what that is. That's called a corm and it's coming up where a scape would come up. You can plant these like little garlic seeds, but they could take two to three years to develop into a whole garlic for you. And as soon as the garlic gets pulled, then these Hubbard squash, which have just started to take off, they should fill in. And then I've got another kind of squash over here, but I don't know what it is. I'm kind of notorious for losing the tags. This is me. Potatoes are doing well. I need to mound some more hay around those this weekend, but we are doing good. I have no idea what I planted. Most of what I put into the potato patch was last year's potatoes that I forgot in the basement. I'm not really sure what we're growing, but they're definitely potatoes. Strawberries are just about done for the season. There aren't a whole lot more starting to ripen up. I did get some beautiful strawberries. We got about a quart of them. I'm thinking I might head up to Breezy Gardens, which is one of the local you picks around here and supplement my berry harvest with a little bit of their berry harvest and make some jam. So y'all know I am a fool for some vining nonsense. So you can be assured I'm so stoked about these hops. So this is first year hops, and you can tell that because the leaves are small, um, but clearly I need a taller trellis for these next year. This year I think they'll eke it out and be fine, but next year, next year they're going to be real tall. Maybe we'll put an arch in over here. I don't know. We'll see. And speaking of climbing, would you look at these beans? pea plant. Last year, all I wanted, all I, all I wanted was to get one of these trellises covered in leaves, beans, peas, whatever. Um, and I think, 
I think we might actually reach that goal this year because I've got three trellises that are coming in and they're looking really good. We are on a fantastic start here for climbing up. The beans are just about to the top in a couple of places. That pea plant over there, the tall telephone peas, I just got a couple of them and they're doing great. Let's see. Look at the size of this. Look at the size of this. Let's pick that right now. Thank you. Thank you. Look at this huge thing. Oh my gosh. I've been working on pocket harvests with the peas for a hot minute now. Um, planted them back in March. Most of them came up. I'll show you the ones by the tomatoes soon. Um, but we've got about a quart's worth in the freezer already. And I'm going to open these up, blanch them, and add them in because pocket harvest, every little bit counts, right? I popped in some zinnias and cosmos with the beans and they're gonna be out in flower soon. And the beans are coming up. I just put in green beans. I wanna say they're Blue Lake pole beans, but honestly, again, I don't remember. Um, but they're coming up just so beautifully this side too. This is Bull. She's a thistle and she is so very tall. Look at that. She's got to be eight and a half feet by now. I have a really hard time pulling out volunteers. So Bull is here. She's here to stay. She's really, really pointy. Um, this is definitely a thistle that wants to be left alone. Oh, look at these flowers. We should get some color soon too. She's absolutely just loaded with flowers getting ready to bloom. Just loaded. I can't wait to see what these look like. And some of the zinnias have opened. And one, one wee marigold. These are my artichokes. They're finally looking like they're gonna make it. I'm rooting for these folks so hard. And there's some celery back there that's doing okay. Sunflower. The arugula is back, it's hot. They've bolted a little bit, that's okay. Look at this volunteer. This is one of those beautiful Linnaeus burning embers, marigolds that I planted last year. So hopefully that'll get big and twisty again. This is primarily stuff that has bolted. These two plants in the back, these are Brussels sprouts. There are actually like four of them in there um, and they're doing okay, which is good. I think that these mystery quote unquote Asian greens are actually just mustard greens. So let's, let's find out what these are like. Hmm. They may be mustard greens. They're a little mild. It tastes good. <laughs> and it looks like the, I wanna be cautiously optimistic. There's not as much looper damage as there was last year on my brassicas. These are bok choy that have already been harvested once and I'm just growing them out to see if I can get a second harvest off of those. This is a volunteer squash, I think. I did not plant that. I did though plant these two little melons here. These are, oh, three little melons. These are Haramadu melons. So we'll see how they do. They're little personal melons. Um, should be a little bigger than a softball. I have not been able to get melons to grow in this yard yet. Um, so fingers crossed. New to me this year, I put in a tub of lettuce. My neighbor gave me this darling little bathtub and uh, we filled it up with lettuce. So we have been eating salad off of that for weeks now. It's been real nice. Y'all, the cucumbers are starting to do it in earnest. We had like three or four really good rains and they finally started taking off. And so did the volunteer borage. 
and the volunteer borage and the volunteer borage and the volunteer borage. There's a lot of borage. Um, somebody told me last year, you plant borage once, you'll never have to plant it again. And that, that seems to be accurate. Um, luckily they're gorgeous and they're wonderful in tea. Check out these gorgeous blossoms. They start out this really sweet pinky purple and then they turn dark blue. Just crazy about these. And we should have plenty. And I also put in some echinacea, some red echinacea. It's starting, it's starting. Uh, random sunflowers. Some more stuff that's going on. These are Broad Windsor fava beans. And they had these really cute white flowers, but I don't, I'm not sure that they actually got pollinated. They were these white flowers with black spots in the middle. Um, it, oh, they did, they did. Look at that, tiny little beans. Tiny little beans. And speaking of tiny little beans, this is what a garbanzo pod looks like. So we just have a few of these. I don't think we'll even get a hill of beans, but they're lovely. They're fuzzy and soft, and there should be one or two garbanzos in there. You can see through the, you can see the sun coming through. It's still really small. So we're gonna let that go for a bit. And then more sunflowers. So much green bean. All the way up to the sky, she's stretching. The onions are looking good. I've been making sure to trim them. We'll start spooning them soon, giving them a little more space for their bulbs. Leeks are doing fantastic. And of course, tomatillo, volunteer tomato. These are, these are all volunteers. Um, volunteer tomatillos. And we've got more volunteer tomatillos. They're kind of everywhere. These are the tomatillos that we're cultivating and you can see they're taller than the volunteers, but the volunteers also look really hardy. Fun things about volunteers, they show up later than my cultivated plants and they look freaking great. I would say they're about a week behind the cultivated plants in terms of flowering, but man, they're sturdy. They look fantastic. And I am starting to have some very real feelings about direct sowing. And I added a little fennel to the chard. I was gonna see if by planting it in with the chard, if we could keep that bulb shaded a little bit and maybe have some good bulb production. So fingers crossed on that, let's keep an eye. Uh, last year I got no bulbs um, and all fronds. So let's see what we get this year. I planted some bush beans around the chard and a little bit of bee balm and a little bit of echinacea that's just starting to bloom. Sunflowers. I planted some spaghetti squash because mom. And here's some more volunteer tomato plants. We weren't gonna plant any tomatoes on this side and I did not plant any tomatoes on this side because we had blight last year. So I didn't plant any tomatoes on this side but there are some tomatoes on this side. So I'm keeping an eye on them really, really closely to see how they do. And if the blight is actually gone from this, hopefully it was just something seasonal. So we'll keep an eye out. The eggplant is coming in beautifully. Uh, the string eggplant, which is on the left there, is a little bit behind the larger sized eggplant. But honestly, that kind of makes sense to me. So looking forward to having eggplant this year. One of the things that I really wanted to do this year was not only have lots and lots of flowers in the garden, but have lots and lots of herbs in the garden. So boy, oh boy, have we got stuff happening here. This is some yarrow in the front, nasturtium, volunteer tomatillo, 
Um, but there's all kinds of stuff going on here. It's a little bit of lemon balm in here. I don't remember what this is. This is yarrow, as is, are the red blossoms over there. Um, there's some coyote mint in there. There is, what else is going on? Might be hyssop. There may be hyssop in there. I can see at the very back, there's, is this oregano? Mm, that's oregano. So there's a lot happening in this planter. I'm gonna be doing some dehydrating for sure and stocking up some medicinal business. A little bit of verbena in here, these beautiful pink and white flowers. Started tucking stuff into the corners here when I ran out of space. So there are a handful of tiny spoon tomatoes and some cosmos and I attempted to grow some broccoli and that was not a thing that happened. Got some squash down in here. I know you were just dying to know about the peas and the tomatoes. Let's take a look. So we had some, some beautiful flushes of peas. These guys on the right look like they are gonna do a second flush. I'm super excited about this. Come on. Super excited about this. And the tomatoes, oh, 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 look at you. Look at you. Um, so tomatoes are just starting to come in. The peas are doing good. I think the King Tuts, these beautiful purple ones, they may be close to spent. I'm waiting on them to ripen up to bring in a couple days. I think those will be ready. Um, and the tomatoes are doing okay here. We're starting to blossom. Oh, yep, yep, I knew it. Look at that. Tomatoes coming in. Tomatoes coming in. I think these are the Korean long, but they could be prairie fire. Little sister here is looking so much better. I had to come through like the bat poop fairy um, and just sprinkle guano all over the place. It seemed to make a huge difference. And look at these spoonies. Spoon tomatoes look freaking great. They are all over the place here. Yay, tomato flowers. Look at that. So it's a bit foresty in here between the spoon tomatoes and the peas, but that's okay, that's okay. Um, we're just gonna do it the way we do it. These spoon tomatoes, 100% indeterminate. Indeterminate. So glad I put up trellising for these folks. Look at these very tiny tomatoes. Little tiny tomatoes. These are those spoon tomatoes. But wait, there's more. Let's walk down to the back. Corn is looking good. What's the saying? Knee high by the 4th of July. So it's the 8th of July and we are thigh high. This is that box that we planted a couple weeks ago with the sweet potatoes and the carrots. Ignore the knotweed. The sweet potatoes are looking freaking great. Looking great. And these ones in the bag are looking great. Any carrots, any carrots? Let's see what we've got. Any carrots? <gasps> there's one in the corner. And there's one. And there's one. Three. Three carrot sprouts, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. Um, all right, so we might get three carrots. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie, I may put more seeds in this and keep trying. I would really like some carrots this year. What you are about to see 
are things I did not plant. Come on. So many things I did not plant in here um, because I planted nothing in here. And you can see we've got a tomatillo, we've got a tomato, we've got some kind of squash, got a little bit of cannabis, more beets, beets, the beets I planted, the tomatillos I did not, nor did I plant that cannabis. So this is the thing. Turns out if you trim your homegrown into the compost and it had seeds in it, you will have cannabis volunteers. And I have been pulling them out all over the place. You know, just tiny raggedy looking ones. Um, but yeah, we are rife with teeny tiny cannabis plants. Will you just look at these berries? Oh my goodness, these are black raspberries. And most of them are not cultivated other than just the trellising that we did. Hopefully the birds will let us have some of these when they are ripe. Oh, is this one ripe? Is this one ripe? Oh, do you see how, easy, how softly it just pulled right off of there? That's when we know they're ripe. That bronze fennel reaching for the sky. She's so pretty. And then we've got mint and chives. Here's the sage. It's thyme that's blooming. Purple echinacea is starting to open up. Now I'm on the side garden, uh, which is brand new to us. We ran out of room for stuff, so we put more things in here. Come have a look at this tobacco. So I did a little bit of thinning last week um, and everybody is looking just so much better for it. Did have a little bit of slug pressure this year, um, but I don't know if it's because it's up against the side of the house where maybe it's easier for slugs to get in or if it's just Ontario lights and it's delicious because it, it turns out all of those in the back are all of those in the back row are Ontario lights. Um, we're having much more luck with the ones in the closest row here. These are Basma, and, but primarily Turkish, um, Turkish Black Sea tobacco, and they are doing fantastic. And once I thinned out, once I thinned this out, it just exploded, so I may do more thinning. Uh, the pumpkins, these are sugar pie pumpkins over here, and they are just starting to bloom. And right now we've only got male flowers, but keeping an eye out. Over here we have more tobacco closest to us, these, and these are going to flower. I can't wait to see what these do. Uh, this is tobacco that you wouldn't want to smoke. It's just too high in nicotine content. So we're just going to let them bloom and see how they do. The, this side of that planter is all basil. So there's all kinds of stuff here. We've got Tulsi, Persian basil, Genovese basil, which the slugs think is delicious, tons of Thai basil. In here, there should be some Isle of Naxos basil. Or maybe that's Isle of Naxos basil and that's Genovese. I, I don't know. But anyway, it's it's all delicious. We've made pesto already and it's freaking great. Um, and then we have Tomatillo 1 and Tomatillo 2. One of the things that is just stealing my heart this year is how many Tomatillo volunteers we have in beds that never saw Tomatillos or compost. Um, so they must have been carried by birds or carried on the wind. Anyway, they're doing great, so I'm not going to pull them up. We'll see how the volunteers do. I, I cannot pull a volunteer, my friend. It just makes my heart hurt. And then these are some tomatoes that we put in last week, and they're already... They're already showing some fruits. Well, these grapes are a holler. Oh my gosh. So. When we very first moved in here, I stuck some in um, that spring and they were like these twig things that you get in a square box from Tractor Supply. And I was sure they had died. And then they never came up last year. And then this year, holy guacamole. 
I'm pretty sure they're gonna clear the porch roof this year. And you all remember that garden bed we built last a couple months ago? It is now all full of sunflowers and okra. Really proud of this okra. It has just started to really take off. And you'll notice also there are a whole bunch of tomatillos in there, which doesn't surprise me at all because compost was used in filling this. There's also some tomatoes, um, but mostly tomatillo volunteers in with the okra. And these sunflowers, my goodness, all the way up to the kitchen window, those guys. The little ones, these are those beautiful Mexican chocolate sunflowers. Isn't this just stunning? Look at this thing. These tall ones are volunteers so I have no idea what color they're gonna come up but I'm so looking forward to it did I show you the barley because I planted some barley I planted some barley y'all look at these things so super pretty and if you're seeing orange flashes it's because I planted some nasturtiums in here so thrilled with this. You know, we're not gonna get a lot, but I just don't mind. This is really fun. Truly, it's doing okay. You'll notice she is in recovery because I did a garbage job of hardening her off when I got her out here. But she's looking so much better. You can see all this brand new, like really green growth in here. That's new growth. Princess has come outside and she's doing good. Another herb patch, some gazanias, some calendula, some bolted cilantro, some dill. And the dill looks like it's coming in great over here. She's just starting to bloom. And we'll put some of those blooms in the freezer. A little bit of lemongrass. So this is the garden this year. I'm so impressed by her. Oh, my brave Piper, huh? Sweetheart. You like a scritchy, huh? This is huge. Hi. Hi, baby girl. Oh, I love your horns. Yeah. Drummer, will you let me give you scritchies too? No, not yet. Oh, sweet drummer. So yeah, that's the state of affairs. First week in July, getting ready to go into our our second weekend. Um, looking forward to harvesting some of this garlic this weekend. So yeah, we are right about where we should be. I'm absolutely thrilled. Look, look, the nasturtiums on the porch even started to bloom. Um, but yeah, so thanks for hanging out. I'm glad I could show you what's going on here. And I will catch you up on the weekend when we harvest some garlic. Take care. My glasses are fogging over. Okay, it's not as nice and cool as I thought it was. <laughs>